Now, the Apostle Paul said that he's a men- he and the other disciples are ministers of a new covenant. And according to my interpretation of what he said, when he said, I am a minister of the new covenant, that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Uh, my interpretation of what he said is that uh, they are in a new covenant that was spoken of in Jeremiah 31, 31, when, when the prophet Jeremiah said, God said he will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and Judah, not like the old covenant that he made with them when he took them out of the land of Egypt, when he was a husband to them, but a new covenant. That's the, that's, I will make with them. And so uh, when Paul says what he says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, that he is the minister of a new covenant, that Jesus said he died to establish when Jesus said in Matthew 26, 28, this is the blood of the new covenant that he sheds when he died on the cross. And it didn't, after Jesus died, Paul walking around saying he and the other disciples are ministers of a new covenant. The new covenant, as I stated, as I stated before, can only be referring to the covenant that Jeremiah 31, 31 said that God would make with the house of Israel. In, Jer- in, 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 in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, it says, Paul says, who also had made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, which is the law, but of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. For the letter kill it, that's the law of Moses, but the spirit give it life, eternal life. So Paul is walking around saying that he is the minister of a new covenant that gives to those that believe in Jesus Christ the promised gift of eternal life. So how, so when Jesus, my understanding is that when Jesus died, he died to establish a new covenant because no, no covenant can be established without blood. Paul established the old covenant by this, this by the shedding the blood of a, of a, of a bull. And I heard somebody else say that we're not in the new covenant. I wanted to ask him. I wanted to ask. I think that was bump, but he gone. I wanted to ask him, how does a new covenant establish? It's got to be established by blood. And it is the blood of Jesus that established the new covenant when he was uh, sacrificed on the cross. And so uh, when I hear people say that we're not in the new covenant now, that means that what Jesus said in Matthew 26, 28 and Luke 22, 20. And uh, uh, First Corinthians eleven twenty five, and as I stated in Mark fourteen twenty two, as I'm stating here in Second Corinthians chapter three verses six, he's saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. For those that are slow to slow to hear, he keeps saying that this is the blood. He was sitting down with his disciples at a feast and saying, "This is at a dinner and saying, this is the blood." I shed for the new covenant. Drink this. This is my blood. Eat, eat my, eat this. Is this is my, eat this is, this is my, my flesh. Eat this. Drink this blood that I shed for the new covenant. And then Paul, after he'd gone and dead, saying, oh, "Well, we are, we are ministers of a new covenant of the new covenant." Yeah. Yeah. So now, how? So you know, according to my understanding, the new covenant was established when he died on the cross. So now I want to know why. What scripture do you have to to show something contrary that the new covenant is not established after Jesus died on the cross, but at some other future future moment? Yeah, I have Ezra. Okay, sure. Uh, I'll step in Ezra. Yeah, good. Back at um, Jeremiah chapter thirty-one, verse thirty-one. Let's see what the new covenant is supposed to be, and how the New Testament failed in fulfilling that. New Testament fail at forgiving that. Yep. Fulfill at fulfilling the new covenant. The new covenant. God said that I will make a new covenant. Show me, show me how. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. 
not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, in that the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt with my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts and write it on their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall, this is the kicker, verse 34, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord for they all shall know me from the least to the greatest of them saith the lord for i will forgive their iniquity and i remember their sin no more verse 34 brothers won't have to we won't have to be on 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 clubhouse to to know about god i won't have to sit back down to a bible teacher to know about god because it says for they all will know him from the least to the greatest and that and the New Testament does not fulfill that because we well, all go to Bible. <laughs> yes, it all does. Does. Hey, yo, real quick, if I may, um, the grant, if I may, um, the law is is what your actions is. Like, for instance, if you believe in something, then you have attributes that display what you believe. Like, for instance, faith without works is dead. Right. So the law comes into play because now you're under that new covenant and it's not you doing the works of the law that can save you. The works of the law is the evidence of your faith. Like if I believe in you, right? If, let's say I just believe in, I'm just giving you an example. If I believe in you, right? And why I'm believing in you, I do things to support the fact that Yeah, I agree with you when you say that Yahweh which is known to you as Jesus Christ, uh, died on the cross and his blood established the new covenant. But you can't throw away the works. You can't throw away the fact that now that you under that new faith, that new covenant that he established with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now there's works behind it. And that works is according to the law. And get into the guy that just said whatever he just said about the new covenant. Don't establish that. Listen, when Yahweh shall come, it ain't like it's going to be like magic. And all of a sudden, now we just going to be following the law. We actually establishing that law right now. Like by us doing those works, by, by us following those laws, statues and the commandments. Now those those laws, statues and commandments become like a muscle memory. You know what I'm saying? Now they're being written on our hearts. They're, it's being established right now. By you saying that the new covenant doesn't doesn't support that or doesn't establish that, that's that's just not true. Because now Yahweh came, he clearly said that he did not come to do away with the law. He says, Think not that I come to do away with the law or the prophets. Right? So he didn't come to do away with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer both of you guys' questions at the same time. And I hope I did. If I didn't, you could go ahead and you could say something and then I'll bounce back on it. So once again, LeGrant, right, you're correct. Right. Well, let, right. let, me just, let me just land land this on this, LeGrant, because you're you're correct on what you're saying. But it's like now you it sounds like to me, and I heard you talk before, me and you talked before. It sounds like you're trying to throw the law out. You're trying to say, well, now you just believe in Jesus Christ and now you just, you know, you're just doing things. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know how you establishing the fact that you believe in the Messiah. If you believe in the Messiah, you'll do the things that the Messiah did. And the things that the Messiah did was he followed the law, statutes and the commandments. I hope that was clear. If not, I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll listen to your response and I'll come back. Well, that wasn't a good idea to answer me and him at the same time because we both under well, two different. Let me, uh, let me answer. Let me answer. Let me answer you first, and then I'll get Tasha Ma. But I can't. You know, y'all say a whole lot as individuals. Then when you combine your your conversations into one, that's just too much. So I'm gonna answer one at a time. Okay, so let me answer can, you first, then, LeGrant. Let me answer. No, you no, first no. Then. I got to answer first. I'm, I'm okay, answering first. Let All me right, answer first, and then uh, 
anybody else want to jump in? I don't want to dominate it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a, 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 a clear understanding of what God said in, re in regards to Jeremiah 31 and the fact that he would establish a new covenant with the house of Israel. It is not an old covenant. He is not revising an old covenant. When you say I'm going to establish a new covenant with Israel, he means just what he says. I'm going to establish a new covenant with Israel, not like the old one, but a new one. And so the laws that he's going to put in our hearts is not the laws of Moses. He's not going to take old laws of the dead nailed to the cross, according to, uh, according to the Apostle Paul in Colossians. Those ordinances and laws were nailed to the cross by Jesus. He's not taking those old dead laws that do not apply to life, bringing that do not bring life or righteousness. He's not bringing those laws and putting those dead laws that are actually the wrath of God and judgment, according to First Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. They are not the promises of God that was brought by Jesus uh, under his new covenant that he established. The laws that God is going to put in the hearts of his, those that believe on Jesus is not the laws and commandments of Moses. Now, let me prove to you with Scripture what I'm saying is correct. In Jeremiah 30, 30, 33, 31, 33, where it says, God says, I will put my law. What law is he going to put in their hearts? It's not, the, like I said, it's not the law of Moses. What law is he talking about? He's talking about basically uh, what he says in, uh, in uh, I think, Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 2. Law of the Spirit. He's putting the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Uh, Moses' law is written on stones and on paper. It's not put, it was not put in our hearts. It was something that was written on stones and paper, but the law God uh, gave the Israel under his new covenant, under his new covenant resides in a believer's inward parts. Inside men, it dwells inside of men. The law spoken of in Jeremiah 33, 30 33, refers to indwelling of the Holy Spirit a believer receives when baptized by the Holy Ghost. Yes, this is the law that is put on the hearts of men. This is what Jesus was trying to explain to Nicodemus when Jesus told Nicodemus that he must be born again to enter the, enter the kingdom of God. The law of the Spirit is the law spoken of in Jeremiah 33, 33 that governs God's new covenant with Israel, not the old covenant, but the new covenant, a new covenant and a new law of redemption is what Jesus was trying to explain to Nicodemus in John chapter three, the law Jesus commanded his disciples to follow in Acts chapter one, verses four and five is the spiritual law of God's new covenant that commands a believer to be baptized by the Holy Ghost. The law spoken of in Jeremiah 31, 31 declares, declared to reside inside of a believer is the Holy Spirit, not the law of Moses. The law spoken of in Jeremiah 31 and 33, 33 prophesies to reside on the inside of a believer under the new covenant is definitively identified by Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 and 26, where it says, And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth in you, with you, and shall be in you. Now, this is consistent with what is stated in Jeremiah 30. 333, where he says that I will put my law inside of them. Here we see the scripture in the new covenant saying that God is going to put the Holy Spirit inside of them. Verse 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in his name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto him, not what Moses said unto him, but whatsoever I have said unto him, he will bring you, bring it to your remembrance and teach you all things. So when you say that, are we teaching us? Are we teaching one another the law of Moses? No, we're not teaching each other the law of Moses under the new covenant of God. What does the scripture says? He says that the Holy Spirit 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. You're going to be taught by the Holy Spirit that resides inside of you all the things that Jesus taught you about the kingdom of God, not dead or uh, carnal laws of Moses. The law, Jeremiah, the law, Jer the law, Jeremiah 31, 31 and 33 prophesies to reside inside the believer that men do not, that men do not teach is the Holy Spirit identified by Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 and 26. According to John chapter 14, the Holy Ghost will not only, number one, dwell inside of a believer, but two, teach a believer all things and bring all things to your remembrance. This is consistent with what is prophesied by the prophet Jeremiah that said, the law shall dwell inside of men and no man need teach you. According to Jesus, the Holy Ghost dwells inside of men and teaches a believer all things. The law spoken of in Jeremiah 31, 33 is undeniably not the law of Moses, but the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus and his disciples throughout the New Testament. In Jeremiah 31, 33, where God says, quote, I will put my law in their inward parts. Remember, it sound what, familiar? What laws they put? What Jeremiah laws 30, they put? What law? I just told you a thousand times it is the law. It is not the law of Moses. It is the Holy Spirit that will be, but it will dwell inside of you and teach you all things. In Jeremiah 31, 33, where God said, quote, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, end quote. God was clearly referring to the spiritual law of his new covenant, whereby a believer is commanded by God to be baptized by the Holy Ghost to receive the promised gift of eternal life. This law, referred to in Jeremiah 31, 33, is the law of the Spirit spoken of in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and, and 9 through 11 that says, quote, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his son in the, in the uh, likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of God, not the law of Moses, but the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any of it, but if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Righteousness, But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Yeah. The law yeah. spoken of right, right, in right, Jeremiah, right, I'm putting right, 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 the end right here. I'm putting the end right here. The law spoken of in Jeremiah 33, 33 is the new covenant. God, uh, the new covenant law of faith, inheritance of God's new covenant promise of eternal life is premised upon faith, not old covenant laws of Moses. This is clearly stated in Romans chapter 3, verse 27 and 28 that says, quote, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without deeds of the law. So now you have, do you have any, any questions? No.